cool. So we're gonna get little shit ready and then we're gonna go do a little bit of snorkeling today. So let's do it. Do you wanna say anything? No. Pretty buddy. No, I just wanna love you. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I just wanna eat you. Work of art. I think so. You haven't tried it yet. It looks delicious. It is an omelet. Yum. The cheese, onion, garlic, hot dog <laughs> omelet. It's really cool to be out in the middle of nowhere, you know, and have the time and ingredients to just like make this freaking delicious breakfast. It seems like it's uh like luxurious. Yeah, very luxurious, yeah. Alright, so we are right here at Northeast Sapodilla K. And this dotted line marks the Sapodilla K Marine Reserve, and you can't fish inside of this. And so we are going to head north along the barrier reef to this reef up here and see if we can't do some spear fishing up there. So we're gearing up. Just wanted to show you basically all the stuff that we bring with us because it really is an expedition because we're unfamiliar with the area. I've researched the charts and everything, but you know, we basically do just do a lot of exploring. We need to have everything that we need on board to be gone for most of the day. So what we bring, here's the uh, spear gun and it's a Magnum. Our fins, obviously, I've got real long Cressies and then Desiree, I don't even know what your brand is. Cheap, no brand. Ma Mares. Yeah. yeah. We've got to get you some better ones. I know. This is our snorkel stuff. So I've got, you know, the weight belt. I wear neoprene uh, booties because I get a lot of chafe on my feet if I snorkel for a long time. A uh, knife that Desiree wears on her uh, calf. Gloves, snorkels, and masks. So all that stuff. We've got the more sensitive stuff in here. Water bottles, spare batteries for the camera, waterproof VHF. Uh, sunscreen and then our camera which is a Sony RX100 and this is actually the original RX100 um, you can pick them up for like four or five hundred bucks now um, because they've made like three or four newer versions so pretty cheap but really good point-and-shoot camera and then this waterproof housing um, which I think this costs 250 bucks our anchor system could use some improvement just got this line with a collapsible anchor like that. What I want to do is get a little bit of chain and an, a proper three strand nylon road for the dinghy. But as for right now, this does the trick. Things that we'd like to get, we don't have room for like a big bucket on Atticus. So what I'd like to get is a really heavy duty bag that you could put fish in possibly that's insulated to keep the fish from getting too hot like if we catch a fish but we still have another couple hours of exploring that way it keeps the fish from going bad um, and then on top of that it keeps the spines from poking into the dinghy that's it so we're ready to rock and roll let's let's get out there love is forever love is forever Tokyo. 
may be the largest snapper that I've shot. I believe this guy is a dog snapper, and then this guy I think is a schoolmaster, and the only way that you can tell the difference, besides slight color chain differences, like yeah, the schoolmaster is a little more yellow on the fins, mm -hmm. but also the dog snapper has this lighter shade under the eye. Whereas the schoolmaster doesn't. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about what, what it was like, what the conditions were like? Yeah, it was murky, fairly murky. Especially when I shot this guy. Like when I saw him, he was in the distance. Like you and I were like talking about something, just mm -hmm. joking around. And I literally just saw like two big shadows swimming over the sand. And that's the only reason I could see them is because they were swimming over sand. So they were darker against that light background. And so I swam down and I've learned that if you've got any chance at all with these bigger fish, the, the goal is be at a correct depth and then pretend like you're ignoring them while you like try to close in on them. And so that's what I did with him. He starts swimming away from me right away. You can see I, I shot him right here. So it was a decent shot from behind. So he was swimming away from me. And I've never successfully shot a fish that was like actively trying to avoid me before. And so this time I just waited for him to hesitate just a little bit, swam real fast for a second, and then took the shot. And you can see it went in here, but it actually, there's no exit wound. So it never, it, it didn't go all the way through. And so he popped off the spear, but luckily it must have got his backbone or something because he just drifted down to the bottom and I was able to swim down and p p grab him. All right, there you go. Buddy, looking good. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked about these guys. <laughs> buddy, they're coming right to the boat. Yeah. I almost want to get in, but I just showered. There's a mom and a little baby. Oh, but it's so pretty right now. Really calm. Well, while Jordan fillets these little guys, or big guys, <laughs> I'm gonna make a little snack for lunch and listen to an audiobook. I'm just marinating the fish and I got a little bean salad ready to go and then we also used uh, two fish heads for some stocks. So I've got that going in the pressure cooker. This is my fish that's marinating in soy sauce, ginger, garlic, and honey and red chili pepper flakes. And this is my little bean salad. And then we used our two fish heads out here in the pressure cooker to make some um, fish stock. Ready? Yeah. There you go, fish head soup. <laughs> this will be interesting. Yeah. How you feeling, bud? I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> and it is just downright uncomfortable in this anchorage right now. Yeah. Not only are we like getting kind of significant size waves right now, they're like coming at weird angles. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes us terrible. Is like we're kind of bumping around, bump around, and all of a sudden we'll go, whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. like, like this. <laughs> God. Good thing for these little nonstick pads that we use. Yeah. I cannot believe how much this situation changed. When I we, know. When we got back from fishing like two hours ago, it was like a lake mm -hmm. out there. It was so pretty. That's how it goes, man. But Desiree made a delicious meal here. Check that out. Oh, wow. Is that good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> very good. Thanks, buddy. Uh-huh. It's like I was saying the other day, that's the thing about cruising is sometimes it's awesome and sometimes it just is miserable. The wind shifted to the north, and as you can see, there's 
basically no protection to the north of us. There's a bunch of scattered reef which breaks up the waves and at least the waves coming out of the Caribbean can't really get to us, but still, there's a super long fetch. So it's choppy, which isn't normally a problem because if you get, you know, chop, that, see, I'm having a hard time even describing this, sorry. If you get chop hitting you on the bow, dead ahead, then the boat just does this, which is pretty decent. That's okay, it's not that bad. But we're getting this weird cross, and I think it's because of the reef, we're getting chop kind of on our starboard bow and on our port bow. And so some of them are even further to port, and that's when we really roll badly. All of a sudden, the situation went from like this idyllic, beautiful day to just like, we can't get comfortable no matter what we do. It's just exhausting and I really hope that this doesn't last too long. But you never know. If this keeps up, we might have to head to Guatemala a little sooner than we thought. Well, it's 8.20 in the evening. We've been uh, watching movies and reading and trying to pass the time, but it is just still rocking and rolling on Atticus. We're just gonna have to deal with this for the night, looks like. Uh. Poor bud. <laughs> Poor bud. Oh. Uh. It's just like we were saying, you get these like moments that are like, wow, this is as close to perfection as we can get. And then all of a sudden, boom. Out of nowhere. Just absolutely miserable. Yeah, it's been going for like five hours. <laughs> oh man. Feels five like hours is battle. Your muscles are constantly working. I'd know? say it's it's the same as being underway. Not yeah, worse. it's it's the same, but we're not getting anywhere. Yeah, so <laughs> we're not accomplishing yeah, we're anything. Just waiting. You basically gotta just strap in, buckle your seatbelt and be like, okay, this is <laughs> this is it. Hopefully it'll calm down sometime soon. But we're just gonna go in and watch some movies and try to distract ourselves till we can fall asleep. Misty eyes. Morning, bud. Morning. Oh man, this feels so good. <laughs> well, it's another beautiful day here in the Sapodillas, of course as if nothing ever happened yesterday. Uh, yeah, it makes me feel like uh, it's almost easy to forget about what happened last night. <laughs> so I'm tempted to be like, oh, let's give it another day. But uh, I don't want to do what I did yesterday all over again. That would be really rough. We're both kind of coming to life slowly this morning. But we just noticed we've got a little friend with us. Jordan reading his book. The Sea and Civilization, a maritime history of the world. Nice. And then, our little friend. And then little dude. You got him, buddy. <laughs> little dude. I got, a new, I got a new pet. So we've had a really pleasant morning so far, and then this massive monster has started rolling in on us. You can tell how intense it's gonna be by like just the darkness. If you look over there, it's quite dark because there's just so much water vapor, it's so dense. And then also like how abrupt the leading edge of the thunder cell is. And you can see it's pretty darn abrupt. It goes from like fairly nice skies to like this instant wall. Um, it could be worse. I've definitely seen worse looking thunder cells, but now you can see like the leading edge of the cloud is right above us. Things are still pretty calm, but here in a minute, I think we're just going to get nailed. The first thing that happens is the, the temperature of the air gets a lot colder. What's happening is the, the ocean is heating up and heating up the water and evaporating water from the sea and all that hot wet air rises till it gets really high up in the atmosphere and then it loses its water vapor and that forms this big cloud and then that air cools down a lot like it's really cold and then gets denser and heavier and falls and it falls really far really far really far and when it hits the ocean it boom 
it like kind of splats out. And so that's what we're getting right now is we're getting that falling cold air from way up in the atmosphere. Nice thing about them this time of year is it was a super hot morning just a moment ago and now it's nice and cool. <laughs> but we better get the boat ready, yeah. so yeah. Oh, there's that cold, cold guy. Woo! Here we go. <laughs> All right, let's close up. Misty eyes, you are home to me. The only place that I long to be. Wonderful. All right, buddy, what you doing? Getting ready to play some cards. In nice. the rain. Really excited. <laughs> Playing some cards, drinking coffee, it's raining outside. What a pleasant summer day in the tropics. <laughs> it is kind of cool because we're collecting water right now. Yeah, and I got a shower out of it. Yeah, we both were able to rinse the salt water off of us. We're filling the water tanks. The wind generator is going like crazy and producing electricity. So, I mean, it's kind of cool because squalls do provide us with a lot, as long as we don't drag anchor. But boy, we've been through a lot worse than this and much worse bottoms. This is nice. Time to enjoy the cool, wet morning. Till the stars fall from the skies you are my misty Today we are going to change anchorages because it's been so rolly that we're on the verge of just getting out of here. It's hard to enjoy a place if you can't sleep well and you just feel exhausted all the time. So we are going to try to head down to Hunting K, which is this island here. So we're going to kind of come out of the reef, head south, and then shoot back in. Of course there's always got to be some issue and the problem with this is that the cruising guide doesn't really show how to approach from the north. She's got this weird line here but then if you look at like the next map she doesn't continue that. It doesn't show you what you should do to approach. And then her written description says travel south until you are west of Hunting K and then approach directly to the island going southeast. I don't know how that makes any sense if you're west, approach from south, whatever. So we're going to try and come down this line here and then go through here, avoiding these shallows here and, and this shallow here and the shallows over here. So it should be an interesting day. All right, well, we're underway. The weather gods are really messing with us the last couple days all morning. We had totally blue skies overhead with some clouds to the west. And so I thought, okay, today's a perfect day to head over for Hunting K. And then all of a sudden we got all this overcast like in the last 20 minutes. I think we're paying back all the good weather and all the good luck that we had in the atolls. Yeah, that is not good getting cloudier and cloudier. This is very stressful. I'm not too happy about that. So there's the island but we can't go right through here it just looks too shallow to me but it looks to me like there's a little bit of a channel heading over to lime key so we're gonna head over to lime key and then back around it's hard to say if we could make it over this stuff there's a chance we could but when when we get good sunlight it looks really shallow to me and over here looks much deeper so might as well give it a go okay a little more speed Depth, starboard, hold, okay, port, okay, now try right for the house, 
All right, so I think we're out of this skinny stuff. Looks like it's a little deeper here. Looks like it's the water is pretty good all the way in from here. Fingers crossed. Whew, and it's grass here. Boy, that makes me feel a lot better. I don't mind too much running aground on grass. We may have made it through the worst of it. Gosh, that was stressful. So we're gonna try and get real tucked in close to this island so that when we get winds out of the northeast, hopefully we'll be a little bit protected tonight. According to the guides, you can carry about eight feet of water up close to the shore. So as long as if the winds come out of the west, we don't swing and hit the shoreline, then the closer the better. Boy, this is really some joke. Here we are, we just anchored after that very tense situation. And of course, it's just blue skies. <laughs> That's crazy. It was like almost completely overcast and now there's like zero clouds. So again, we're just paying the price for all that good luck and good weather we had in the atolls, I think. But I'm gonna take you down below real quick. Desiree gets migraines and she's got a huge migraine. So we'll go down and, and visit her. Oh, yeah, I noticed I get really bad migraines when I don't get good sleep and when I'm really hot. I felt like I was gonna throw up. You asked me if I needed water and I like couldn't even say yes. It was so beautiful coming in. Like I saw two spotted eagle rays, I saw a turtle. I meant to tell you but I couldn't make words. I was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I am excited to just swim off the boat and go snorkeling. Just getting cold will really, really help. All right, well. Time to dive on the anchor. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just gotta love the view from the companionway. guys well hope you enjoyed the episode we got a couple of really exciting things that we want to throw your way first off we wanted to thank a bunch of our new patrons so we've got Roy Roy Winston Rob Williams and my good buddy Brett Johnson all we've right also got Stephen place sailing here and now Mike and Jocelyn Stephen Perigo Will Flores Xenon Robert Mills Taylor Huff I think I feel that's like all I had of them. one more. So thanks guys for all your support. You mean the world to us. You help us get to amazing places like this and you're awesome. Also, if you guys haven't heard, we've got a whole bunch of cool Atticus swag out. So we got t-shirts, coffee mugs, all kinds of super cool stuff. So if you haven't checked it out already, uh, if you're in the United States, you should be able to see all of our swag below this video. So just scroll down, you see a bunch of it. You can purchase it right there. If you don't see that, then you can click on the link to our online store in the description for this video. And we've got a holiday sale going on between now and December 25th. So if you want to get 10% off of your Project Atticus swag, you can use the promo code BUD2018. So head over there and grab your swag so you can be twinsies with us. And once you've got your Project Atticus swag and you're walking around town sporting your Project Atticus pride, make sure to send us some photos, just like our friends Darla and Steve on SV Someday and their cute little cat Simon, as well as Brad Scott's awesome little man, Whiskey. And if you're hoping to get yourself or a loved one a present for this holiday season and you are looking to get more experience going offshore, sailing away from coastlines, getting blue water experience without having to have the responsibility of taking care of yourself, your boat, your crew for the very first time, then we highly recommend checking out SailLibra.com. They are an organization that does trips all over the world. They will teach you how to sail a boat offshore. They'll teach you a lot of really great skills about blue water sailing and you don't have to take on any of the responsibility yourself and you don't have to know anything about boats to sign up. The exciting thing is if you go over there and use the promo code PA Offshore, all caps, then you can get $500 off of their upcoming Caribbean circuit, which is super awesome. Head over there and look at their itinerary. They're hitting up all kinds of cool spots in the Eastern Caribbean. It looks like it's gonna be a ton of fun. I wish I could do it. And if you book by this Friday, you get a free Project Atticus and Sail Libra koozie. That's right. Okay guys, well, that's, uh, that's enough. That was a mouthful. <laughs> but we will see you guys next week and we'll let you know when an upcoming live stream is happening. Enjoy so. your holiday season. All right, see you guys.
And a cool shot. Very flattering. <laughs> it, yeah, it's it looks it makes me look good. That's what's important, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>